Judges chapter 1. Now after the death of Joshua, it came to pass. So in the book of Judge, Judges, Joshua is dead. That the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? Well, Judges starts off, they are seeking God. Judges starts off good, but uh, you don't need to worry. It will end up terrible. And the Lord said, Ju Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. God is speaking and working with the people in the book of Judges. In the beginning. And Judah said unto Simeon, his brother, Come up with me into my lot. Why? God said, Judah shall go up. Didn't say anything about Simeon. So already Judah is showing signs of lack of faith in God and the faith in military numbers as, come on, Simeon, let's join together. And when God wants one and you go into unity with others, you are disobeying God. So he says to Simeon, brother, come up with me into my lot. Remember, they cast lots for the land. That we may fight against the Canaanites. And I likewise will go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him. So here's two tribes of Israel joined together for war. And Judah went up and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Parasites into their hand. And they slew of them in Bezek 10,000 men. And they found Adol Bezek in Bezek, and they fought against him. So here's one man. And they slew the Canaanites and the Parasites for stewing battles. Joshua, when he died, he said, Listen, there's two battles to come. It's not completely done when Joshua dies. And Adol Bezek fled. He got away. And they pursued after him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. Kind of weird. And Adol Bezek said, Three score and ten kings, seventy kings, have their thumbs and their great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table. <laughs> As I have done, so God has requ requited me. So it looks like out of Isaac had 70 men. He cut off their thumbs and their big toes and they fed underneath his table. And be not deceived, God's not mocked, even though it's not written yet. But so a man soweth that he shall also reap. He gets the same treatment. And he dies. No thumbs and no big toes. They say if you don't have your big toes, you don't have any balance. You don't, it's, I don't know if you can't completely not walk, but it's hard. And without your thumbs, you can't hold coffee cups. You can't hold glasses. If there's one thing that marks against evolution in man, it's the fact is that little thing that sticks up when you need a ride down the highway. It's that little thing that if you were to have your fingerprints done, it has its own little square by itself. And it's called a thumb. And it's remarkable that we take this thumb that God's given us for an advantage. We don't thank God. And there's things we can't do if we didn't have it. This king cannot do things without... Now the children of Judah had fought against Jerusalem. This is Jerusalem before it becomes Jerusalem. Judah is not fighting them themselves. But this would be the name of the city later when David. But to give us, the Holy Spirit has given us where the locale is. And had taken it and smitten it with the edge of the sword. And set the city on fire. That's what God does to Jerusalem in the book of Jeremiah, closing second 
uh, the Chronicles. The city is destroyed now because of sin. God says, go in there and wipe them out because they're exceedingly sinners. God tells the king of Babylon, go in there and wipe it out because they're, stink they're extreme sinners. And they're my people. I guarantee this place called Jerusalem from Jebusiah, it looks like this city has been sacked. Long before even the Jews are in there, it's been definitely sacked and destroyed and burned many times while the Jews have been in it. And afterwards, the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites and dwelt in the mountain and in the south and in the valley. Now when they fought Jerusalem, that's the Jebusites. They leave the Jebusites and go back after the Canaanites. And Judah went against the Canaanites and dwelt in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron before was Kirjif Arbor. And when you find parentheses in your Bible, that's an extra PS fact. Information that called out by the Holy Spirit, I want you to pay attention. And they slew Shishai and, and Helam and Talmai. And from thence he went against the inhabitants of Deber, and the name Deber before was Kirjath Sefer. So the city had a name, now it has a new name. And we're going to go back into history again. And Caleb said, He that smiteth Kirjath Sefer, and taketh it, to him will I give Aksha my daughter to wife. Look how many times Caleb has mentioned his family. He must have been a remarkable man for God. And Othniel, the son of Kenneth, Caleb's younger brother, took it. And he gave him Echish, his daughter, to wife. And it came to pass when she came to him, that she moved him to ask of her father a field plant and she said unto him what will thou and she said unto him oh yeah uh, Caleb said unto her what will thou she said unto him give me a blessing make me happy for thou hast given me a south land give me also springs of water and Caleb gave her the upper springs and the neither spring for drinking water for crops for animals and the children of Kenite, Moses' father-in-law. Now let's go back to Numbers chapter 10, verse 29. Numbers 10, 29. The Kenites. Moses' father-in-law. And with scripture, with scripture, we learn new things. In Numbers 10, 29, Moses is having a conversation with his brother-in-law. And we read over here, it said, Can I, the children of Moses' father-in-law. And Moses said in a whole battle, that's his brother-in-law, Moses' brother-in-law, the son of Regal, that's Moses' father-in-law. The Mennonite, Moses' father-in-law. We are journeying unto a place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good. For the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart unto my own land and to my kindred. And he said, Moses, leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. He's a guide, a vice. And he doesn't go. But later on in the, in the book of Judges, we read chapter 1, verse 16. Though Hobad didn't go, there are children of Moses' father-in-law, that did go, that did follow Moses. 
And they went up out of the city of the palm trees, and with the children of Judah into the wilderness. The city of palm trees is Jericho. Which lieth in the south of Arad, and they dwell in they went and dwelt among the people. Now they're not Jewish. But they are of Moses' father-in-law. I mean, yeah, Moses' father-in-law. They're of the family of Moses, Moses' wife's side. He invited them. And evidently his father-in-law and his brother-in-law did not go, but these other children of his father-in-law, here they are. And they're mentioned. And they take Israel's side, Judah. And Judah went with Simeon, his brother. And they slew the Canaanites that inhabited Zephath and utterly destroyed it. That's good. That's what God told them to do. And the name of the city was called Hormah. And Judah took Gaza. That's over there the Philistines. That's right up against the Mediterranean Sea. With the coast thereof. And Ascalon, Philistines. With the coast thereof. And Ekron, with the coast thereof. Look what the Bible records in Judges 1. The people that will give King Saul and David trouble their entire life has been conquered by Judah, Judges 1, but it had not been completely conquered. It was not utterly destroyed. How do you know? Because King Saul and King David are battling the Philistines all the time. Had Judah given utterly destroyed we would not read about them in the life of King Saul and King David. There would have been no story of Goliath and David if Judah had completely obeyed the word of God. Because those cities there, verse, verse 18 again, 666, Judah took Gaza, took it. And, that, and the coast thereof in Escalon, the coast thereof in Ekron, with the coast thereof. Now that's three cities. There were two, uh, five of them all together. And the Lord was with Judah. And he drove out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley, because they had chariots of iron. Now let me ask you a question, verse 19. If the Lord is with Judah, is it that the Lord said, okay, because they got chariots of iron, you can't, we can't win? No. What was the problem here in verse 19 is Judah had given up on the Lord. If Judah would stay and any of these men would have stayed with the Lord, those chariots of iron would have been scrap iron. They would have been sitting in a junkyard somewhere. In the Valley of Judah, they had the advantage. It says, they drive out the, the inhabitants of the mountain, but they could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley. If they're on the mountain and the valley's down below, they're going down into, they're not climbing nothing. In order for the enemy, they've got to climb. And in the valley, they're locked in. Though, because chariots of iron is a weak excuse because God says go and he had put them in the position where they could just wipe them all out Judah had the advantage but they lost it's a shame and then watch this again let's get back and they gave Hebron unto Caleb as Moses said look at all the times Caleb shows up for his faith and for his belief. Now, we're talking about the family of Judah again. We're talking about Caleb. Why would the Holy Spirit add a PS, verse 20? Caleb went in with the strength of God and conquered giants and a city and a mountain. What's your problem? And verse 20 would be a kick in the teeth to the Jews today still that if old man Caleb can do it, 
And when you read the story of Caleb, it does not sound like he had an army. That boy went up to the giants and killed them. One by one. With no excuse. And we just read about his daughter. He had springs in his valley. He had springs in his mountain. The upper and the neither springs. He had watering that, that dealt through his land, that he was able to give his daughter such refreshing, such a source of life as water. What's your guy's problem? Verse 19. Verse 20 outlines verse 19 as Judah, you're a failure. Compare what was, what was I think 85 years old was he? Thence the three sons of Anak, three giants he kicked and killed in victory. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem. And later on we're going to see a battle where Joab becomes the captain of David's home because David gets ranked on by the Jebusites. Oh, an old man but the blind and lame can come over here and kill us. And David says, whoever goes in there and gets those gutters, they're the captain of my holes. And David has to go war against the Jebusites, which Benjamin was supposed to do. And they conquer the city and becomes the city, Jerusalem. And Joab becomes captain because incomplete Diso disobedience against the word of God. Judah had it. Benjamin had it. God intended them to utterly destroy. And Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem. But the Jebusites dwelt with the children of Benjamin. That was not supposed to happen. In Jerusalem unto this day. Now notice, again, Jerusalem is Benjamin's territory. But Judah swallows them all up and when Israel split during Rehoboam and Jeroboam you got Israel north and you got Judah south and in that Judah south is Benjamin in that Judah south you got Simeon they're swallowed up and the house of Joseph they also went up against Bethel that's where Jacob began his walk with the Lord that's the place where there was a ladder of angels going up and down. That's the place where God was with Jacob. And the Lord was with them. And the house of Joseph sent to this cry. That's the first and last time that word shows up. This cry, Bethel. Now the name of the city before it was Luz. And it was changed by Jacob. And it's changed again by Jacob. It's Luz and, and Jacob says, oh man, the Lord is here, house of God. And he comes back and he rebuilds that altar. And he says, God, the house of God. El Bethel. And now we're going back to fight the land. Children of Joseph. Joseph was the beloved son of Jacob. And he's getting the place where Jacob started. And the spies saw a man come forth out of the city. And they said to him, show us, like we pray thee, the entrance into the city. Come forth out of the city. But they had to ask the man where the city, where the entrance. What was this place that you could not walk up and say, oh, where's the doors? I mean, there would be huge gates. And they would have elders sitting on them. Sodom had them. Lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom. There is something about this city, Luz or Bethel, you couldn't find the door. That's how protected it was. Show us, we pray thee, the entrance into the city, and we will show thee mercy. And when he showed them the entrance into the city, it may have been they just did not have a lot of entrances, which would be wise. They smote the city with the edge of the sword, but they let go the man and all his family. It showed them a blessing. 
Was he of the men and family that God said you're supposed to kill and get rid of? The Canaanite, the Perizzite, and you know, you know what the name of the list is. Was that man one of them? I mean, he could have been just a, he could have been an Ishmaelite. He could have been you know, a Babylon. I mean, well, Babylon is not real yet, but it doesn't tell us. And the man went into the land of the Hittites and built a city and called the name thereof Luz. <laughs> oh, that city is destroyed. Bethel is destroyed. I'll build a city and I'll rename it in the honor of that city, Luz. Which is the name thereof unto this day. So there's still a city called Luz. Neither did Manasseh drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shem and her towns, nor Tecna and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Dor and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Eblum and her town. Look at all the disobedience here. Nor the inhabitants of Megiddo, that's Armageddon, and her towns. But the Canaanites would dwell in the land. That's what God said you're not supposed to do. And this will cause havoc for King Solomon later. And it came to pass when Israel was strong. Boston strong. Orlando strong. That they put the Canaanites to tribute. They gave them tax. Oh, we can't beat you. We'll, we'll, we'll have you give us money. Money talks. And did not utterly drive them out. Look how the Holy Spirit put that. You were supposed to. Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer. But the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer among them. Now that's not picked on a few tribes. Neither did Zebulun drive out the inhabitants of Hetron. Nor the inhabitants of Nahal. But the Canaanites dwelt among them and became tributary. Tax. Neither did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Echo. At you. Nor the inhabitants of Zedon, nor Ahlab, nor Asbib, nor Helba, nor Aphek, nor Rehob. But the Asherites dwelt among the Canaanites and inhabitants of the land. Oh, see? But they did not drive them out. They were supposed to be driven out. They were supposed to be killed. Keep going. Neither did Nephetala drive out the inhabitants of Bethshemish, nor the inhabitants of Bethnal. But he dwelt among the Canaanites. Notice it says he. God is inquiring these tribes, these men, to their father, a son of Jacob. They are still representing their father, Nephtali. They are still representing their father, Judah. They are still representing their father, Zebulun and Asher. He dwelt among the Canaanites and inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth and, and of Beth Anath, Became tributaries on them. We'll tax them. That's what's going to happen to America pretty soon. We're having a big battle with, with the uh, aliens and immigrants and all that. We'll come up with a way. We'll just tax them. And you'll say, well, where did all that come from? Came from the Bible. Money talks. But the Amorites would, would dwell in Mount Heres in Agilon. Wait a minute. Verse 34. And the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the mountain. That's the wrong place to put your enemy. They can chuck stuff down at you. For they would not suffer them to come down in the valley. Again, that's the same thing with Judah. A military that goes downhill is better than a military that has to go uphill. They could roll stuff at them. But the Amorites would dwell in the Mount Heres in Agilon and in Shalbon. Yet the hand of the but the hand of the house of Joseph prevailed, so that they became tributary. Taxman. And the coast of the Amorites was from the going up to Abravim, from the rock and upward. And we close that chapter, the first chapter. A chapter of rebellion against the word of God is how 
Judges starts.